and God convicts you and he draws you. So I would much rather follow the Lord's instructions knowing that I must stand before him one day. Amen. All right, Warriors of the Gate, hopefully uh, that answered your question there. Um, we're going to move on to the next question, which is from XB Cruiser. Uh, this person writes, The seven churches in Revelations are types uh, uh, and are types, and none of them are perfect, as I understand. This is still true today. So this leaves us the choice uh, when, uh, when looking for a place to worship, how do we obey the uh, scriptures to assemble together? Thank you, Pastor Meyer. All right. Uh, first of all, in the when we think of church, the first thing that comes to mind because of our culture is some big building and some big organization somewhere with a lot of people coming and a lot of things going on. And really, that's not church at all. The early church met in homes. The church that is in the house of Onesiphorus and so forth. The, the churches were in homes. Jesus said that those that are fruitful in the kingdom of God, some will bring forth 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. I don't believe any church should be bigger than 100 people. If it is, it needs to divide off and become another church and another outreach. But working together, yes. But God didn't intend for these big super mega organizations with thousands of people and 20 pastors and this, these little kingdoms that rise up. That's never been his will. Uh, the strength is not necessarily in unity of people, but in autonomy operating under the direction of the Spirit. Wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And that is just as much a church as any church that ever existed. If you have even two or three, and by the way, if you have only two or three, it's easier to be of one mind and one accord, isn't it? Okay? That is a church. God is there with all that he is and with all of his miracles and all of his gifts of the Spirit. And if you have a few more, fine. If you get to 30, wonderful, beautiful church. 60, it's super. A hundred, uh, that's rare, but it can happen. I've often said, if you preach the truth, you never have to worry about a building program. You're always going to have room. Okay? So basically, churches met in homes. And so in some cases where a number of people have gotten together and God raises up a people and, and allows you to get a building, that's okay. Just stay out of organizations don't register. Just be a church and don't try to be something you cannot be or something God doesn't want you to be. Keep it simple. No symbols, no idols, no membership. Just get together and worship God. Amen. And all will be well. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. All right, XP Cruiser, hopefully that answered your question. Uh, the next three questions that are up next are from Truthful Witness 1 and Desert Dude and OLT Freak 2009. Um, we'll go ahead with Truthful Witness 1. Thanks for so much uh, for all your love and faith and prayers. We, are listening, uh, we were listening the last weekend to the Revelation series, Tape 42, where you mentioned a video made, by, made that had Eddie Rothschild's voice on it. Uh, Doug, Doug would like to know what is the name of that video. Please and thank you very much. Okay, yes, uh, Edmund de Rothschild was, uh, was speaking on one of the videos. You know, I'd have to almost, it's a long time ago. <laughs> uh, I'd have to go back and look. I do no doubt have it. Um, I, think I, can, I think I can lay my hands on it. Uh, but we would have to transfer it from VHS, the old VHS, onto disc, which we could do. Yeah, it's not that hard. That's not a great problem. Uh, thanks for reminding me of that. Uh, if some of the brethren here can remind me to look for that later, I'd like them to see it too. It is quite an interesting tape. Uh, it's called the Fourth World Wilderness Convention. Hmm. And the man who hosted it was George Hunt, a friend of mine from uh, Colorado. He's still up and going. And he actually was at the convention, 
the Fourth World Wilderness Convention working as a guide. Uh, he kind of got in as a substitute guide, and he went over, you know, I want to tell you this. This is kind of amazing, but uh, George is quite a guy. I met him for lunch one time in uh, Fond du Lac at a restaurant, and we had a good talk. And I've talked with him, corresponded with him subsequently. Very intelligent man, loves God. But anyway, what he did, he got in as a guide for this Fourth World Wilderness Convention because someone got sick, and he saw that they needed somebody and saw some advertisement or something, and he got in, got that job. And at the meeting were all of the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, uh, all these Illuminists from all over. And they left one chair vacant. That was supposed to be for Lucifer. Huh. And George Hunt went, he didn't know that, he went and sat in it. <laughs> right next to Mrs. Rockefeller. Wow. And all hell broke loose. So I, there are a lot of things that, and he tells about this, I, I believe, on that, that video as well. It's a very interesting video. So if we can, we can dig this out and get it on disc, we could get it out to you if any of you are interested in seeing it. It tells about the conspiracy, this green conspiracy, so forth, to uh, use Mother Earth, the Mother Earth concept, as a new kind of fatherland and weld the people together in unity. And this goes back, by the way, to um, 1988, I believe, or 89. So they were planning this for a long time. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, Truthful Witness uh, uh, Pasture has a long, huge archive of stuff. I remember, uh, what was it, a couple, like a year or, or two years ago, uh, we had to empty out some, gra uh, some garage space. <laughs> we literally had to get a dumpster because there was some of the stuff that he gets in. And uh, so we'll take a look. We'll, uh, we'll dive into our archives here, and uh, hopefully we can find that video for you and uh, keep you posted on that. So uh, thanks for asking, our truthful witness. We're going to move on to Desert Dude, also known as our good brother Savio, our airline pilot. Uh, Roger that, uh, Savio. We're going to go with your question. Pastor, I have a question that is combined from two people. I have someone telling me I should go to seminary. I would only to come against them. Uh, and then he laughs about that. Anyway, Sarah wants to know when would a godly pastor be considered a pastor since we're, uh, we are not, we are not MDs or MDIVS. I don't know what you mean by that, but, uh, but Sarah wants to know when would would a godly pastor be considered a pastor? Oh, okay. Ma okay. Oh, master of divinity. That's what. Oh. <laughs> well, you wouldn't want to have that kind of a degree. First of all, divinity, divine means you're God. If a master of divinity means you're a master God. Okay. The word reverend is a title that belongs only to God. If a man calls himself a reverend, he's saying, I am God. Now, how, where does that bite you? Hmm. <laughs> you know, just to put it bluntly. I mean, isn't that terrible? But it's true. In the book of the Psalms, it says, he only is reverend. Comes right and tells you that. Now, um, if God calls someone, he will call them through his word. They don't need to go to Bible school. Uh, they don't need to go to seminary. Uh, if you tried to go to a seminary or Bible school, it would make you sick every day you walked in the door. They are full of apostasy, every one of them bar none. Uh, the best thing to do if you feel God has called you is get in that word constantly. God will raise you up and give you a message. You'll begin to speak. Things will begin to happen. God will confirm his word with signs following, and you will have a proven ministry in a very short period of time. All you need is a heart that is obedient to God, a love for the word, and walk with him and let him use you. Start with a few people and, and just witness to them and teach them what you know, what God is showing you. And you don't have to be certified or official or full-fledged or whatever they want to call you. Uh, you don't need that. Uh, all you're going to do, the only reason, I'll tell you, put it, put it this way. These ministers 